I'm going to get the top, the top part done now. I'm going to get the, the slides attached to it and then we'll get to uh, the part of the mechanism that makes it move and I'll make sure I record that part. Okay, since I didn't exactly show this on the, the last go around, I'm going to show it here. Um, this will be the mechanism for the top. This end is threaded. This is a nut that I just drilled a hole in, drove a roll pin through, and then ground it down round so that it's smaller than the material. On this end, same thing, nut, roll pin, ground down, and this end is not threaded. This end is just free to slip. So this will get bolted to the bottom, this will get bolted to the top, and that, as this turns in, will pull the table back and forth. Okay, tighten down the runners, squared them with the sides, and this has all been sanded down, and I put a coat of wax on it. I did the same thing on the bottom half down here. These were already on here, already tightened up. I just sanded everything and put a coat of wax on it. I use McGuire's wax. I use it on all my saw surfaces. I use it for any time I need to do stuff like this. If you're going to put car wax on your saw surfaces and stuff like that, I uh, recommend that you uh, make sure it contains no silicone. And depending on the climate, I've got friends from all over this country and some of them can use McGuire, some of them can't. They say it promotes rusting. You just have to test, 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 test. Make sure what you're putting on there is not gonna hurt it worse than what you're trying to do to help it. All right, now that that's there, we'll line this up, hopefully, if I did this right. Slide that right together. Now, I have somewhat squared this thing up. It was a little hard to do. It's not 100% square. This thing's not 100% perfect. It's perfectly flat, and the in and out will work, all that. This is made all out of reclaimed material. Some of it's a little hard to work with, so by no means is this thing machine perfect. If I had a CNC where I could knock out each piece and it'd be exact and everything else and the holes be exact, it would be a different story. But doing it the way I did it, I think it all in all is gonna turn out halfway decent. This face is perfect. Well, as perfect as it can be. This face is pretty flush. This face is pretty flush. This face down here, however, as you can see, it lacks a little bit. I've already have this assembly in here, so rather than take the whole thing apart and square this up, we're just gonna call this handcrafted and that's as good as it's gonna get. If something like that bothers you, then I'm sorry. My recommendation would be to just don't enter to win it. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be a jerk when I say that. I'm just saying some people, they, they don't like the, the little quirks that come along with handcrafted stuff. I've already showed this assembly here. Now that we have this assembly, I've already laid it in here. And the way, the way that I figure out what this is gonna do is I make sure that the holes are down for here and the holes are up to go into this top. I shove this thing all the way up to where that washer hits right there. Mark it and drill those holes. Okay, I ran this out some, flipped it upside down, and now we can see where this wants to live. Drill that right there, tap it, bolt it, and we'll be good to go. Okay, now that we've got this bolted in right here, this thing's pretty much complete. I took the handles off just so that I could lock these nuts on and use a drill to spin this thing and move it in and out just for purposes of being able to show it quicker than the minor adjustments that happen. I've already sanded this top kind of rounded over the edges, trying to eliminate some of the sharp edges, but there will still be some. Just have to be careful with it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out this way first. Okay, 
keep in mind it's brand new. Mine made all kinds of racket when I first started using it too. Now it's nice and smooth and this one's got a little bit of dust and it'll have to wear in. It pulls this way which is going to be your right from center six and a quarter inches. Coming out from the press, it comes five and a quarter. Kind of hard to show you without this being bolted down, but nothing really moves on it. It's really tight. So we we'll close it back up. Not going to be doing it like this, so it's really not going to make that rack. That's it. All right, put one of the knobs back on it just to show how how easy it does actually operate. If you can see that it is moving. Trust me, it's moving. But you know, you're not supposed to be moving this thing, you know, great big hunks every time you turn the handle. The object is to be able to dial it in. But you can see that it's turning. I'm going to make some handles that go over top of this that, that are, were similar to what I had that have pins that fit over top of this so that you can crank it faster and use this for your fine adjustment. You know, it'll just be a slip on, crank it, and take that crank and do whatever you need to with it. But, uh, like I said, it's, it's a little bit squeaky and a little bit noisy right now. It's just got to be worked in, and I'll have most of that out of it by the time it gets given away. Okay, now that I've shown you all that, it's basically built. Um, I just have some fine adjusting that I want to do to it, and I'm going to try to lubricate the, shat, the threaded rod in here, get rid of some of the squeaks, and run it in and out a few times to get it broke in real good. So, uh, the next video, I will be showing the fence. I'm going to make a fence for it, a two-piece fence like the one that I have. And I will get this other tabletop drill press off of this lathe that I made out of it and get it put back together and get this bolted on it and show you how it will actually function on a tabletop drill press. I appreciate you watching and as always, like, subscribe and help me out. Share this around.